Hello, everybody. Good morning. And here's to you, Tommy Robinson. <laughs> uh, hi, I think we're live. What's up, y'all? What's going down? Not you, George. You can sit in the sun. What is what is up? All right. I wanted to show you a really pretty picture. This is where I live. How pretty is that? Me and my brother did tree work yesterday and then after uh, went out to this field and just, that's the moon. You can't see it in its glory because it was taken on a, a camera phone, but that's a full moon just being that awesome. And no, that's not fields of soy. Someone accused me of that today. Someone said, oh, were you standing in a field of, so field of soy? Because that's me standing there. But I didn't want to confuse people, so I did that because I don't want to be accused again of standing in a field of soy. Yesterday's, yesterday's episode is not up on YouTube, and I'll tell you why. Because I was too... It's still on Vimeo, though. There's no like big conspiracy with it. It's just uh, I played too many songs, and I opened my inbox, and it's just... Strike, 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 strike. And I was, I, I'm still so, uh, still a little shell shocked from the last banning that I just unlisted it. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this shit. I, I, I shouldn't play other people's songs like that because it'll, it's just, I knew that was coming. And there were so many of them yesterday because we were just jamming. And I was like, oh, guys, let's just all listen to a full song recorded by someone else. <laughs> like, I don't think that's a free speech issue. I have no problem with that. If someone else records and writes a song and I play it and that person gets pissed, not, not that they should, I wouldn't get pissed. Anyone can clip anything I do and put it anywhere. I don't care at all. But that I get like that, like following that rule makes sense. The rules that I don't, that I will fight against and never comply with are the ones that are like, if you do something that we don't really describe properly, that we only enforce uh, when it's against our political opponents, we will take your YouTube from you. And I'm like, no, no, that's the one I'm not going to comply with. But if it's a copyright issue. So there's <clears throat> at least five, if not six of like, hello, this is YouTube. Uh, you played another person's song. Don't be a dick. I'm like, all right. Looks like that will be the mystery episode. But still, Vimeo.com slash Owen Benjamin if you want to see it. Because the uh, something very cool came out of it. We all, for those of you that were there, thank you for all the help. We all wrote uh, a song for Tommy Robinson. And a bizarre thing happened on my YouTube. I think that there is a censorship situation happening because... My YouTube always goes up in subscribers every day. Like if you just refresh it, it, it's always going up. It never goes down. And yesterday was the first day that I saw like a couple like blips down. And mathematically speaking, that's very unlikely that I, I put up a, a video that got 10,000 hits in, you know, 12 hours that, that let, let's look at, uh, Really quickly, let's just see what the thumbs ups to thumbs down ratio was. I highly doubt that the people were like, "Oh, okay, I'm fine. I'm I'm gonna bail on Owen because of this video." Twenty two hundred thumbs ups, seventeen thumbs downs, uh, ten thousand nine hundred views. So, and that that's an insane ratio, by the way. That if like, cause ten thousand nine hundred views is 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 a decent amount, but not really, you know, that's not like crazy high. So basically 22% of the people who watched it clicked thumbs up. That's really, really unheard of. And, um, so when, when you do a video like that, I highly doubt that for the first time since I've ever been on YouTube, that's when people are like, Un unsubscribe. No, that was that's absolutely because Tommy Robinson's name is in the title, and there really is right now a uh, an internet fatwa on that guy, man. So we wrote a song yesterday together as a group, and uh, 
and it turned out great. I'll play it for you right now. <clears throat> <coughs> I heard there was a secret court where journalists weren't allowed to report but you don't really care for freedom do you it goes like this without the fifth the gavel falls and they cut your wrist and that uh, I can't remember this part I, I, I improv this part when I was recording it and, and it's not right that this is how they rule you. 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 But Tommy has been here before. He's seen this room and he's walked this floor. Last time you tried to kill him, but he endured you. You need the votes for the growing state and won't stop who your voters rape. It's not okay that this is how they rule you. <clears throat> how they rule you. How they rule you. How they rule you. let you know who's really coming to your shores but now they don't really tell the story ever true yeah the state tries to say Tommy's got racial hate but really it's a fear of a caliphate but the state says no this is how we rule you <coughs> How we rule ya, how we rule ya, how we rule ya, how we rule ya. Pedophiles are celebrated, well Tommy Robinson's incarcerated, but you never really care for children, do ya? They move in on you And the kids look to you for truth Please don't just say Baby, this is how they will rule you How they rule you How they rule you How they rule you How they rule you So thanks for everyone who helped write that. You guys came through huge, and uh, my voice is off. I got I got crazy allergies this this we uh, this this time of year. It's making my head a little cloudy, and I think part of it has to do with standing in a field of soy. It wasn't soy. I remember when um like how Chelsea Manning is seen as a valid political figure and is a brave and beautiful woman and not at all crazy. Listen, listen, you're the one who's crazy if you think she is crazy. All right, Chelsea Manning tweeted this yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, barefoot standing on the edge of a, uh, of a building. There's a lot of symmetry with that. There's a red car and a black car. I wonder if it's uh if that's like a red pill black pill metaphor where where this dude will throw his body onto. Anyway, so that dude's real crazy. Listen, has, has have most people ever had a suicidal thought? Sure. Have most people ever even stand stood on a ledge like that? Less people. Have uh have those people taken a picture of it and tweeted it to hundreds of thousands of people on social media? No, that's a crazy thing to do. 
And uh, I didn't even look up if uh, if he did it because I'm I'm sure he didn't. That's like maybe maybe he really is a girl now because that's something a chick could do. A chick could uh would be like, oh, I, I'm gonna kill myself and then not do it. You know that women attempt suicide far more than men, but men follow through with it far more than women. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, maybe the estrogen saved uh, that dude's life. Because uh, women just don't seem to follow through on a suicide threat. I'm glad. I don't like suicide. Even people that I find uh, preposterous. <clears throat> like, I don't like Chelsea Manning. I don't want him to jump off a building. I'm glad he didn't. Truly, I am. I don't like people killing themselves. It makes me uh, really sad. But let's all be honest. That's insane. Like, to tweet that, it means you're, you're mentally crazy. And society isn't helping Chelsea Manning by saying that everything he's doing is brave and beautiful and wonderful and uh, he doesn't have mental health issues. He's insane. And the only chance that that dude has at a uh, uh, somewhat stable life is, is not to have the entire world going, yeah, of everything you say is good. That 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 breaks that 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 allows the delusional to just expand. <clears throat> that isn't how you help somebody. If you have someone who's schizophrenic or just really really out there mentally in a negative, destructive, self-destructive way, and they're like, "Listen, the FBI is chasing me right now. Uh, there's dragons under my skin." Uh, every time I close my eyes, I see the ghost of a child that I, I can only see when my eyes are closed, but I know it's right in front of me. Like stuff like that. Don't be like, yeah, that's all true. If you do that, that person will most likely die. If you're really close to that person or if it's millions of people, if millions of people are like, yeah, there, there are dragons under your skin and that makes you brave and beautiful. I mean, at that point it's like, oh, I thought I might've been crazy, but now that you say that I'm going to rip my skin off. Ah, uh, someone drew this. I thought was was really hilarious. Uh, it was a drawing of like uh, people. This this dude likes. Or, I don't know Lego Matt Egos. I don't know if that's a, a dude or a chick. I have no idea. I'm not assigning gender to a internet um, cartoon. But it was me, Malinu, and uh, Shapiro and Peterson, and I, <laughs> I, and the person like summed up what they say. In like a few words, and I didn't realize that it's it's funny what they chose mine was. For Jordan Peterson, it says, sort yourself out. And Ben Shapiro's, it says, okay, folks. And Stefan Molyneux says, not an argument. And mine just says, feed the bear. <laughs> so, that being said, go ahead and feed the bear. Um, you know, super chats, paypal.me slash feed the bear. But that's not, we all know that that's not what uh, feed the bear really means. I do say that sometimes, though, and I'm like, come on, feed that bear, baby. Feed the bear. Feed the bear. So I started thinking about what Feed the Bear really entails. Because I was saying Feed the Bear almost every time I would get drunk for like most of my life. Like like I'd be at a bar just with my buddies and I'd be like, Feed the Bear! Ah. I think it's, uh, I think one thing that's that's needed right now in life that isn't being experienced by people is just that that ability to be raw. That ability to just be, to not self censor, to not overthink what your thoughts are, and whether or not you can say that something, or whether or not something will come back at you, or someone will be offended, or something. Feed the bear just just is is like feed that part of you that's like, well, it's true, so I'm gonna say it, and stopping me from saying it is much like trying to stop a bear when you've come between them and their cubs, or them and their honey, or salmon. Like, it's not a good time. That's why someone recently on Facebook was talking about how a mutual friend of ours <clears throat> had had gotten in a fiery fight with them on Facebook and then unfriended them. Oh, when I say mutual friend, I'm not still friends with this guy, by the way. And, and they were like, yeah, he's got Trump derangement syndrome, just totally lost his mind. And uh, I looked to see, and he'd also unfriended me, but he didn't make a show of it. And I thought that was hilarious. I've seen a few people do that. Where uh, they just quietly try and unfriend or like distance from me or something like that. Because they know that if they try and make a display with me, 
I will show them what a display looks like. And I've amassed a good amount of people that, that are like-minded individuals. Uh, God bless the unbearables. And they're all walks of life and they're hilarious and good-hearted people. But like, I have an audience. So, because I wouldn't shut up. I wouldn't take a knee. I, I Like when people were coming at me and doing stuff and trying to de destroy my name. And why do they do that? I'll tell you why they do that. There's a reason. This isn't paranoia. It makes perfect sense if you have a bad argument. If you have a bad argument and someone else has a good argument, the bear, uh, you have two options. You either concede, which isn't an option for a lot of these people, or you destroy the person with the good argument. <clears throat> back in the day, and this is something to be grateful for, back in the day you would have to kill me. Uh, most people would just kill the person with the better argument. Now they just try to uh, character assassinate them. So if someone is seen as an extreme figure or uh, literally Hitler, ugh, you don't have to listen to them. They try to do that with Jordan Peterson constantly. And it works a lot of times, to be honest. It works with Peterson sometimes. There's people I know. I was one of the first people to talk a lot about Peterson. When his first videos were hitting YouTube, <clears throat> this is a while ago. This is when I did Vancouver, so this must have been a while ago, whatever it was. I did um, a Why Didn't They Laugh episode, which you can subscribe to, by the way. It, it's this audio, but I've been doing it a lot longer than I've been doing live streams and uh, at iTunes or Podbean or wherever you get podcasts. But uh, I, I, was, I did a, uh, an episode of him in Canada, and I interviewed... The guy opening for me, who was a wicked uh, left-wing Canadian com comedian. Good, cool dude, but I mean, one of those guys, it's like, but why would you want to offend people? You know, just total, total pussy in a lot of ways. But, and so I've been a fan of Peterson since day one, since, since most people weren't knowing who the stream is, stream resumed. What the fuck? Oh, fuck. Fuck you. Hang on. Ugh, these goddamn fucking... Fuck! They, they, they just don't stop. These motherfuckers. Is this going still? Is this going or no? Is it back? Exit and coming back in? It comes back when you don't say anything. All right, I'm going to start this again. Stick around, guys. I'm coming back. Hello, is this working at all? Hello, hello. We're just gonna keep rolling. We're just gonna keep rolling. Oh no, YouTube is not gonna be uh, being abandoned. That's a bad move. I was reading in this time, in this little downtime here. Um, I was the chat stuff, and no, that's bad strategy. I've thought about this a lot, and it's bad strategy. We have Vimeo as a, a backup. Vimeo has its own issues. This audience is way bigger and they want you to do that. What they want is they want you to go to your own little safe space where everybody agrees with you and the whole world is niched out. And so then I, I, I have to go on Vimeo where I have 3,000 followers versus YouTube where I have 120,000 followers. It, it, it isn't smart. Hang on, give me a second. Let me fucking fix this. Don't leave though. Is this guy, is this working? Is it good?
Anything, guys? Anything? I'm back. My back. It's not gonna get. All right, I'll be. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. It works when you don't talk. I can't tell because there's so many fucking tr stupid pussy trolls in this chat that I don't even know who to like listen to with this shit. Man, let me just fucking lower the output even more. Man, I hate like I hate these male fucking pussies, dude. They're they're such fucking pussies. <clears throat> Hello, am I good? Lower the quality of the stream and it will stop driving. I know. Obviously, I, I, I do all that stuff, guys. I, I Just just trust me on that. I fucking hate... Like, I seriously can't... Like, if you guys want to talk to me, super chat me. Honestly. Whenever I go into this fucking chat, I become infuriated. Some of the people in here are such fucking little cunts. It's like... Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I literally... It, it's fucking infuriating. To like go in the chat and just see people be like, ugh, such dicks. Hi, hi, George. Why so triggered, says Nicholas Barson. Well, guess what, buddy? You're never going to be here ever again. How's that sound? Does that sound fun? You fucking little bitch. Bye. Bye. You fucking bitch. <laughs> Uh, I give him a 30 second timeout. It's more humiliating. All right. Let's, uh, since I'm now in infuriated, let's watch something really nice and uplifting. All right. This is my, some really good advice from my brother that he gave me while we were doing tree work. Where's my brother? There he is. I'd say, you know, would you cut off your thumb for a thousand dollars or a million dollars or a billion, billion dollars? What about a car, like unlimited money? Would you cut off both your hands for all the money in the world, but you can't get your hands back ever? And then I point out like today, someone lost their hand. Today, someone lost their vision. Like, would you go blind for all the money in the world? No. Well, today someone went blind for nothing. So why don't we just get jacked up and pumped to be like, I have hands and I can see. That's awesome. I love that shit. Here's the thing is um, when something like the Tommy Robinson thing happened, which is it's, it's huge, by the way. What, what, this is a, a pivotal point in uh, what will be history. Like what, they, what they're trying to do is so crazy that what happens is the bots are alerted and the internet becomes complete fucking nonsense. If, has anyone noticed that all week? Like the bot, the bots, the comments, everything's like really, really aggressive and undeserved and just crazy. They do that because they want to distract the population from actually seeing reality. And so I get it constantly. Like people, like it, it, it's... When they unleash the bots, and I was going to have my buddy Kevin on today to explain bots. He's a nuclear physicist who helped uh, code for Amazon and all these people. He's, he's, a, he's a fucking inventor. But did anyone see what Pierce Morgan said? What a prick. No, I didn't see that. But it, it's one of those things where anybody for Tommy Robinson's imprisonment is your enemy. Enemy. There is no debate. That's over. Like anybody that's like, well, he was on a suspension and he did 
violate no guys that is that that person will fucking put you in a pool of gasoline and light you on fire if it meant he got one more candy that that person is not a friend never listen to that person ever again like there is arguments for different things there is debate there is there is no debate that he, that man should be in prison right now. There's no debate at all. Like what happened in England right now is um, horrifying. These these elitists, these elites, these government officials in England, a, a lot of them are pedophiles. Let me show you something really crazy. Look at this. Ready? Look at this. What is uh... list of childless leaders in the EU? France. Marcon, United Kingdom, Theresa May, Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, Italy, Paolo Gentiloni, <clears throat> Germany, Angela Fuckface, Luxembourg, Xavier Battel, Sweden, Stefan Lubditi, Netherlands, Mark Rutte, European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker. <clears throat> okay, I'm starting to realize that a lot of times... Hang on, did you see JBP's AMA on Reddit? Never seen so many bad faith arguments in one spot. Oh, it's getting nutty. So a lot of these EU people are are pedophiles. Like why on earth would you be like a world leader and not have kids? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. I don't know, he might have kids. I don't, I don't, I gotta look that one up. But the childless weirdos, it's because they fuck kids. And... I think part of the, the grooming scandals and the, and the gang rape stuff with all these immigrants, <laughs> it's, uh, part of it is just because they want votes and they need population and uh, growth for a lot of their economic Ponzi schemes. And they don't care who the people are or where they come from as long as they have a pulse and they'll vote uh, for an expansion of government. And so they'll cover up any of these scandals because if the, public, if the mass public knew how many rapes they're doing right now on the children. If there isn't a, a, a revolt, I have no respect for the men in England. Like I just none. That's the whole that's the whole uh point of men <laughs> is protect the women and children from being raped by foreign invaders. So but there's also scandals that have emerged that some of these top uh, officials and globalist EU guys uh, use some of these, uh, these, these gangs, some of these Muslim rape gangs to, to get them kids. And that's straight up real. <laughs> the evidence for it is like crazy. Hang on, they don't have to be foreign to be predators, just call them psychopaths. No, they're, they're the foreign ones. Of course I don't, I, I'm not doing that, asshole. Man, you guys are fucking pussies. Of course there's psychopaths in, in all areas. That's a given. One thing that I'm starting to become a little uh, done with as well is when people are like, so why do you not say that some, some stupid bitch interviewing um, Jordan Peterson was like uh, asking about Harvey Weinstein and he was like, gave this really good answer. And she was like, but you didn't say you disapprove of Harvey Weinstein's actions. And he was like, I thought that was obvious. Of course I disapprove with it. It's monstrous. Like I'm, I'm doing what adults do. And then they talk about what caused it and then how to, pres uh, not have it happen in the future. Right. So when people are like, well, there's, there's psychopaths in every population. I mean, a child could be assaulted in a normal environment, in, 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 in like a normal village. It's like, yeah, no shit. Now, now multiply it by like 50,000% when you pump in a bunch of North African migrants with a uh, culture of force and rape. Uh, yeah, it's a little different, you know. People did, did do stonings. It's like, well, it could happen to someone did that with me also because I said, uh, you know, get married, have kids is, is the most uh, feminist thing you can do. It's the, it's, uh, the most the safest place a woman can be is uh, married. The safest place for a kid is when his biological father is in the home and the, and the family isn't dissolved. You know, uh, kids get beaten and raped, what, 30 times more by 
when a stepfather or a, a, a non-blood male relative is uh, in the home. And then people, of course, are so fucking dumb that they're like, oh, oh, well, I have a stepdad and he never fucked me. And you're like, how do you brush your teeth with a brain that fucking weak? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, a, a biological father uh, molested me. And uh, so what you say is, yeah, of course, a, a biological father can molest people. You fucking retard. The odds are way it's like saying don't take a ride with a blind man in a car and someone being like well i was in a car and the driver was blind and we went 10 feet and no one died it's like okay and i'm not denying that that happened but let's all agree that driving when the driver is blind is more dangerous than when the driver isn't blind Theoretically, a blind driver could win a driving race just by sheer guessing where you're going to go. But not understanding uh, uh, statistical probability is insane. And that's the only reason that the race IQ issue is relevant now. And, and it's not a fun conversation. And it's not... It's uncomfortable and it sounds shitty. To say, but it only matters when you're dealing with millions and millions of people migrating. If you meet one individual person, their race has very, very little to do with anything about them, if anything at all. If you meet a black guy and a white guy, like the black dude, like assuming the black guy has a lower IQ than the white guy is a error. And that's, that's not true. There's just, it's pretty much exactly as likely that the black guy will be smarter than the white guy. But when you start dealing with millions of people, little tiny things become big, big, big things. Like, let's say uh, your population that's coming in has an IQ average that's just below the necessary amount to comprehend a free market economy. Some people are too dumb to understand how markets work. You understand that? And so if you have a population of people that their average IQ is not high enough to understand how buying and selling goods work, those are also typically the type of people that, that gang rape people. <laughs> and that's a fucking problem. Uh, you're racist. No, no. It's not about race. This population is of black people with fucking wicked high IQs. It's not about black, white. It's about like certain groups of people on average have very low IQs. And I'm not a scientist to say, oh, it was because of traumas because uh, uh, they experienced a lot of trauma as kids. They weren't, they were underfed. Maybe the, the amount of words you hear from your parents uh, increases your IQ or lowers your IQ. I'm not making any claims about that shit, but the reality is it's real. And so when you have tons and tons of people coming in with like, they're operating on different hardware and different software, cultural software and hardware of your, of your brain. It's like, but so you're racist. No, I'm not. I'm not a scientist. The, the amount of, uh, uh, data that you would need to understand like what, why that is, you know, may, like, like North Korea, South Korea, you have one line, uh, decided by governments an arbitrary line between two genetically equal point uh, groups of people and North Koreans are four inches shorter than South Koreans. So if you didn't have all the data, you would think, uh, well, there's something genetic about them North Koreans that make them shorter. And then you find out it's because they're starving because of socialism. That may likely be true with IQ differences. I don't know. I'm not a fucking scientist, but it's a fact. So if you have a ton of people that are so retarded, they think curing AIDS uh, comes from gang raping a baby. That's true, by the way. Like the North African Muslim type, good, good vibes, those guys, they believe that in order to cure AIDS, you have to rape a baby. Is that racist to, to say that's a problem? That's fucking insane. That's true. That is a true thing. 
These are the things that Robinson was reporting on that nobody, um, that everyone was trying to silence him because the elites for, for uh, good reason are like the normal English people, black, white, red, brown, gay, straight, doesn't matter. The people that are just in England being English if they knew the horrors that these people are bringing with them, it's there's no way they'd be okay with it. <laughs> Bro, I'm Tunisian. They don't do that shit. Says Troll D Dossier. Your name is your first name is Troll. Am I saying Tunisians? You fucking retard. Ugh. They do know the horrors, they just don't give a damn. I don't know about that. I, I, I can't believe that. I don't think that... Uh, I, don't, I don't think they can know. I don't think that you can be a man. Well, I know that some exist, obviously. Pedophiles, cucks. I don't think you can be a man and know that you have gangs roaming your streets looking for kids to kidnap and rape. By the thousands in England. Thousands. Sweden, same with this shit. Look at these fucking countries and look, look, at, look at the leadership here. Let's look at it one more time. United Kingdom, Scotland, Italy, Germany, Luxembourg, Sweden, Netherlands. Childless leaders, guys. Childless leaders. Uh, you think that's a, a, a coinky dink? Um, all right, ban murder needs to be done. Can't believe it hasn't yet. Oh, I know. That's funny, but... All right, today's a negative one. I literally thought today... I was going to name the episode today. Uh, um, grateful. You have a Trudeau as a family. It's... Oh, my God. Somebody fucking... Sh just someone shoot me in the head. All right, I'm going to read the Super Chats. Hopefully they... And then we'll just maybe play piano or some shit. But Tommy Robinson being in prison for, for, for his words... If that doesn't uh, scare the absolute fuck out of you, is it his kids? Dude, it, I'm, I don't know how to communicate sometimes. To, to, uh, okay, so the fact Justin Trudeau has kids, am I saying what about that? Okay, do, am I saying that people without kids are all um, pedophiles? No, not even close. <laughs> it's... Am I saying people with kids can't be pedophiles or creeps? No, none of that. It, it's not a direct correlation, but it's, it's very, very weird. Like imagine if every single one, uh, okay. Imagine if there's, there's eight world leaders and all of them have mustaches and drive vans and they, and they all have like a, a candy, a box of candy in their van. Now, does that mean they're all pedophiles? No. But that's a red flag. And I think uh, there's a real brainwashing that's happening to people where we're not allowed to see obvious shit. Where if someone is um, like, like profiling, profiling is very valid and needs to be done all the time. We profile everything. We, we have stereotypes and we have prejudices for uh, survival reasons. Perfect example. If, if you're served a plate of food in a restaurant and that plate of food in a restaurant smells like battery acid, do you think it's, um, do you have a right to be prejudicial or, uh, and, and say, I don't want to eat this food. And someone's like, wow, what's wrong with the food? It's food. It's like, yeah, but it smells like battery acid. And then the waiter would say, but you don't know if it's battery acid. You're making a, a generalization, white male. It's like, I don't need to take the risk. And that's what Thomas Sowell's whole new book is about. It's about the different types of prejudice. There's the ancient bigotry that is shit, that is evil, where it's like, I will not be friends with a, a redheaded person, no matter what. And someone proves that they're really smart and really cool and loyal and nice and and the redheaded and he's like no matter what you do my daddy hated redheads his daddy hated redheads we are not a redheaded loving family uh that's bad now if you are like i'm not gonna hire anyone with a tattoo on their face 
That's valid. Now, did they tattoo their face because they're just artistic and wacky and it's because they're just doing something new that no one else is doing? Maybe. But I don't need to risk that. Like, is the, is the uh, homeless guy with no pants waving around a gun and screaming? Is, is he doing street art? Maybe. Maybe. I don't need to, I don't need to serve, I don't, I don't need to talk to that guy. I'm going to cross the street. Is the, uh, the group of people from an impoverished nation, the group of men coming on boats from an impoverished nation, uh, believing in a religion that uh, uses stonings and beheadings of, of homosexuals, and you have to have four witnesses to a, uh, a rape in order to prosecute, or the woman is also killed for the fact she's now impure. Uh, and they have an average IQ of 75. Uh, they can't speak your language. They don't want to speak your language. You're going to give them welfare so they never have to try at all. Uh, if you have a problem with that, is that racism? No. Racism would be a uh, Algerian, like an Algerian uh, hardworking guy who comes to England and he's like, I have learned the language. I work really hard to learn the language and I've always wanted freedom and I, I love uh, free markets and, and voting and I want to have a family and I, I'm, I believe in, in, in the, you know, in God and I just, I will work so hard for you. And I, if you just hate that guy because he's Algerian, then you're a fucking asshole. Like that sounds like a good dude. And that's the guy that you want in your country. The guy that's like, I'm not, and just rapes your kids. No, get the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like calling everyone racist is so fucking dumb. And white people are so fucking susceptible to it. Myself included. No one likes being called racist. Because the thing about being called racist is trying to prove you're not racist. You almost always sound more racist. And that's the trick. That's the scam. Like, what does racist even fucking mean? Like, that's like a meaningless term. <clears throat> Howdy, y'all, and thanks for all you do. I'm getting married on July 4th, and my fiancé loves koalas. Is koala bear taken? If not, can I be koala bear? I believe it's taken. Go to unbearablesapp.com. But, uh, you can be koala wala bear. Welcome. Chelsea is sick. You should talk to Doc... Um, Amate. Yeah, 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 he should. I, I like Doc Amate. I've met Chelsea. Or I've seen Chelsea manning up close and personal and uh, real, real weird. Real weird. How they really was awesome. Good job, Bears. Hell yeah, it was. I'm going to play it again, too, I think. You were back. Perfect. Trolls suck. Yeah, well, they're just... Trolls are... Like, my brother hates ticks. I hate trolls. Like, trolls are the ticks to me. Like, they're, they're these, lecher, like these leeches on the internet that just suck up uh, they, they live on, on animosity and, and just fucking with people and, and taking a good conversation and making it go off the rails. And, um, and they're just this disease, this plague of shit. It's the same with, um, with ticks. Like ticks don't really do anything. They, you, animals don't eat, like live on ticks. Like mosquitoes have an argument, you know, without mosquitoes, frogs and birds and a bunch of animals eat mosquitoes. So it's part of the, the food chain, but a tick is, is is nothing more than just a grim reaper of death. Just to fucking, just to fuck with you. There's really no other purpose except uh, my brother's like population control. He said, uh, trying to make a joke out of his constant thinking about ticks. That's how I am with trolls. Like I try to chill. I try to like look at trolls and be like, uh, just don't let it bother you, Owen. No, it fuck, they bother me. They're fucking annoying. I want to just like... Shit, like I want to get a, a, a tick collar, except for YouTube for trolls, where they just fucking fall off and die, but they don't. They just keep, and, they, and they, they like to latch on to groups of people that are having a good time, you know, because <laughs> that's what really gets them off. It's kind of like how pedophiles uh, want to bang kids. It's because the more innocent and the more good and the more uh, vulnerable, the more treachery and awful shit is even more awful by comparison. You know, like next to a giant, a short man looks even shorter and vice versa. 
So trolls get get the most excitement off uh, off people that that are like good vibes, like people that that trust people. Like if I see someone write something, my big weakness, my big Achilles heel, is that I I usually assume the person's a good person, and they really want to say something to me, and I'm going to read it and address it. And uh, and a lot of times that isn't the case. <laughs> This is a little off topic, but you and your brother can do a No Help Harry episode. Oh, we should. We, we were coming up with some great games yesterday and some great characters. We were doing a game called um, Was It Because? Where we were on the same side, but the, the game was, we, the, it was a mystery as to why someone was mad at us. Where it was like, was it because we were late picking you up? And my brother would be like, nah, that's definitely not it. You, you think it was because... Uh, we we actually we, you know we were a little rude to uh to your girlfriend. It's like well that's understandable. Uh, was it because and it just keeps escalating, and neither one of us know why it was that they're mad. But it it got to the point where we had we had murdered his girlfriend and put the body in the trunk of his own car. You know because it starts out we're we're just doing all the details all the, all the details of the story. Like was it because. There is a broken window in your house because we, we may have done that, but you know, it's just a broken window. It's like, was it because and it just keeps going until because uh, you, that your that your girlfriend came home and, and saw what we're what, what we're doing in your house. You know that we're I can't remember what that part was. We're, we're committing a crime and she witnessed us and then we killed her. And that's why he's mad at us. <laughs> like me and him play these games all day. It's hilarious. CNN, we are the most trusted name in news. Uh, well, cool, man. Hey, if you super chat it, I'll read it. Hi, Owen. I would likely, I would officially like to be Dogwood Bear. Loving the bear community. Very thankful for you guys. P.S. I emailed Tommy the song yesterday. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, welcome, Dogwood Bear. Go to unbearablesapp.com, register. Islam is communism with a god. Wow. I feel that way about the Catholic Church sometimes. I've, I know I have a lot of, there's a lot of Catholic bears and you might have just been like, what? But I, there's a, like Islam is, is, fuck it. I don't feel like talking about religion for an hour. Greatest comeback ever. Your first name is Troll. It's, it's true. Hey, Big Bear, you're communicating perfectly. These jerky trolls are pulling your string. Kick them to the curb. They are the problem, not you. Oh, well, that, well, yeah, but see, the thing that gets me pissed is I'm like, people believe trolls. Like people fucking uh, they like see that shit and they're like, well, it seems like a lot of people agree that Tommy Robinson should be in prison. So I'm just going to agree because I have no moral standards at all. And I will go with the pack because I'm a zebra, not a lion. And the zebra stripes are designed so that if you break ranks in your, in your little pack, that's the first time a predator can see you and then you die. So some people are wired that way. I'm not wired like that. I'm not striped. I could be in a room of 100 people, and if 99 of them say something that I think is absolutely wrong, I won't go with it. I don't care if I'm the only one. I'd be like, no, you guys are all fucked. And, um, and, and like the consensus of a group, and this is the weakness of democracy, to be honest with you. Is group consensus doesn't fucking mean anything. I'm pro democracy, but only with a small government because we should be voting on how we spend our own money, how much we're taxed, what our foreign policy is, shit like that. Voting on personal choices, voting on fucking, you know, how much money we steal from each other. It's, it's, it's insane. It's like the group doesn't know shit. And, and uh, the people we're, we're bringing in by the boatloads are fucking not the people I want to have any consensus with. That's racist. No, it isn't. It just isn't. It's, it's just true. And if, and if that's racist, then, then okay. I, it would suck to come to terms with being racist because that term to me is so ugly and gross. And I don't want to be associated with that, but I'm starting to not know what racist means. So being for private health care is racist. 
Well, either either uh, the person doesn't know what the word means, or the the definition of the word has changed so drastically that I that if that's what it means, then I am. And then they'd just be like, uh, "What? You can't be though." It's like I used to think I was a feminist because I wanted equality of opportunity for women, and I I just am very supportive of. But I'm the opposite of a feminist. Because feminist has become the hatred of women. And so now when people are like, are you a feminist? I'm like, no, of course not. That's the hatred of women. Just like um, racist now means you have to vote Democrat in America or else you're a racist. That's what they told Kanye West. They said, you are not a black man or you're a self-hating crazy black man unless you vote Democrat. But yet that's not racist. To me, that's what racist is. Racist is saying because of your skin, you have to do this. If you had other skin, you wouldn't have to do this. That is the textbook definition of racism. Racism saying, I don't want uh, boatloads of North African uh, immigrants who uh, a lot of them practice Islam and um, currently have open air slave trade is going on right now there. They have slave trade. They have slave markets right now. People like Black Lives Matter and shit still talk about the slavery in America from 18 that was abolished in the Civil War in the 1860s. There's slave trades right now. And those dudes coming to your shores in Europe are part of societies with open slave markets. Not, not 1860. 2018. <laughs> All right. John McCain just wanted to say he's still alive. Nice. I was targeted by gang diagnosed with schizophrenia. I was targeted by a gang slash diagnosed with schizophrenia. I need to know more about that, Anthony. Still in serious need of cash for medication and supplies. Go find me. I, I don't know you, man. Straight up, I'm not going to plug stuff I don't know. I've been so fucking burned by, by uh, generosity. That I have to seriously know who the fuck you are if you're going to uh, want me to plug your GoFundMe. That's just it. It's about self-preservation. Because I've seen people that I've plugged and the shit isn't fucking valid. And I'm like, how? C-? But at a certain point in, a, in a man's life, in an, in an adult's life, I can't just be like, well, I didn't know. I have to vet. I have to vet people now. I, Cause I can't imagine being such a scumbag that someone would lie about, uh, about needing money because of like a horrifying predicament they're in and they have kids and all this shit and just going to a stranger and getting money from that stranger because of what they say to me, if you lie about that and you profit off that, you're such a fucking tick that I didn't even know those people could exist like that. I knew that there was uh, like scam artists and shit like that, but I, I didn't think that there was people that could come into this chat and recognize that there are a lot of good hearted people and generous people and people that uh, are community oriented and want to help each other and, and manipulate that. Like for me, I, I breathed such a sigh of relief when I met a lot of you people and found this, this way of existing. It's like, finally, Finally, people can speak what they believe. People can have arguments without hating each other. People can support each other's businesses. People can talk about music and comedy and, and, and what's really happening in the world and history. And I was like, yes. And then you'll see these people be like, I'm a homeless veteran who really needs some money. And I'm like, of course I'll help you, dude. Like, how, that's why we have community. And then to find out sometimes these people are fucking liars or they are like really bad people that'll come at you. That's why I need to know who the fuck the people are now if I ever help anyone out. Because that's because helping each other is a big part of community. And without that, without us doing that, that's why the government expands. Because if we don't have the balls to give and the heart to give to others in need... Well, then the government has to at the end of a fucking gun. And so it's one thing to just say you hate socialism. It's another thing to live a life where you uh, don't need it. 
because altruism is important. People are doing worse than you. People are doing better than you. People are in a position where, uh, like this, like this, for example, that one of the most expensive things in the world is free. Free is scary. So I don't do, I don't have ads for a reason because I don't want to have to say certain things. I don't want to be manipulated by people. I don't want to ever be in a position where my income is based on saying something I don't fully believe. So that's why it's it's awesome that you guys like Super Chat or uh, support me on Patreon or, or support me at hugepianist.com slash subscribe or anything you guys do. Because without that, I can't do this. I'm about to have my second child. Like I have an insane amount of expenses, even with just this minimum setup. And it's like, I couldn't do that. Like free is expensive. Look what's happening with Netflix. You know, Netflix is like the devil's, uh, the devil's offer of like, it's only $8 a month and it's everything you've ever wanted at your fingertips. It's everything. And then you'd share a password with someone else and, and you think you're getting away with it. And like 10 people are all using the same password. So that's like 80 cents a person versus cable. It's a hundred dollars a month plus commercials. You don't want to deal with that stuff. So you're like, you think you're getting away with something, but really it's, it's just spreading the pr government propaganda of Netflix. Netflix now has a new show simply about racial wage gaps. They have another show about why monogamy isn't good. They have a show all about why, like 13 reasons why you should kill yourself if you're a kid and shit. And some, some people would be like, well, you know, it's arguing against suicide. No, no. Suicide's never been higher with kids as, they, as it is now. And I fucking feel for these kids, man. I feel for these kids. They're given this world of, of, I don't, just so much nihilism. And that's why so many of them come here and listen. And if you're uh, short on cash and can't subscribe or donate or anything, that's fine. It's totally fine. I want you to have a strong life and build our culture out so that we can fight the, the bullshit. But just know that the most expensive thing you'll ever have in life is, is when something is free or when something is so preposterously cheap. Like, remember, I, when I was a kid, you could get 20 CDs for a penny. And it's like, wow. And that, but then you have to keep buying them. You, you get signed up for this thing and it's almost impossible to get out of. And every month they send you a new selection and you have to pay for it. And like, it, it's like, almost impossible to fucking cancel and that's how they hook you and, and netflix has hooked people netflix now their entire programming is just society destroying propaganda and that's not a fucking exaggeration it's either about why the nuclear family is bad why races are different dear white people dear white people hey dear black people but see, that's the thing. As a comedian, I could do a Dear Black People or something like that. But as a person, it's not good to do that. Like, well, I'm just going to fucking start mocking black people. No. It's bad to become what, what the people want you to hate want you to be. You know? It's like, I don't want, I have no desire to make a show called Dear Black People. There is no black people. There's, there's individuals. There's individuals. Some are white, some are black, some are tall, some are short. I think height is a much different, a much more effective way of categorizing people, by the way. I can't believe a 5'9er and a 5'7er could ever be friends, but you know, I have a dream. All right, let me read a couple more of these. Uh, oh, there's some interesting stuff, right? Hey Big Bear, if I got uh, verified in a previous live stream, will my name already be in the Unbearables database? Cello Bear. No, you got to put it in there, Cello Bear. If everything is racist, no, then nothing is racist. That's true, Roy Bear. But what, what it means is uh, everybody that isn't for state expansion is, is a racist. Because when a leftist, like Lena Dunham used to say nigger all the time. If people like were around Lena Dunham, they knew that. She would say nigger a lot. It's like, if you're part of that state cult, you can do anything and you get away with it. You can literally fuck children and not go to jail. And if someone reports on, on the fucking of children, that guy's in jail. Ugh. 
I wrote a Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville parody about racism of Democratic run cities in your PayPal. Oh, I'll check that out right now. I got to check the PayPal shit. Sorry. I have two boys, three and one, just as you will. And I'm trying to find heroes for them to look up to. What are your thoughts? See you this weekend. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about this weekend, man. Portland sold out. Uh, I might add another 15 tickets, though. Bellevue sold out. Richland's filling up big. It's going to be awesome. What are my thoughts? Uh, yeah, Jordan Peterson would is the hero's hero for kids. I would just I would just get, especially adolescent kids, kids that are just becoming men and really need. Um, oh, someone just, Liam just wrote, dear Jewish people. That's pretty hilarious. Like as a waiter, I would, uh, I would, I would write dear Canadians and be like tip. But I, my thoughts on heroes for, for young men, there's not a lot of them. There's just not a lot of them. There are mo- a lot of men are becoming such fucking pussies because they think cowing to women and letting them say and do anything is somehow um, good. I think women are screaming on the inside. Like someone please tell me that I should just have babies. <laughs> someone please just pay for goddamn dinner and be nice to me. Because all these male feminists keep raping the fucking chicks. Schneiderman, Weinstein, like all these guys. And people act like it's this big surprise. It's kind of like how many billionaires never went to college. There's always these articles where it's like, and can you believe that Bill Gates didn't even finish college? I mean, even even with that, he still became a billionaire. And then you're like, what about Steve Jobs? I mean, even Steve Jobs didn't even finish college. What about Zuckerberg? I mean... There, another exception to the rule. What about fucking all of them? Warren Buffett, all these people. It's like, just look at the history of a lot of these billionaires. Like, they, they were self-made. They, they started when they were like nine. <coughs> College is just taking four years of your most profitable time of your life away from you to teach you just how to comply to nonsense. It's the same with these like uh, male feminist rapists. They're like, can you believe that Harvey Weinstein attended a woman's rights march? It's like, yes, because that type of dude does that. It's like, can you believe these European leaders with no children might possibly have weird sexual impulses or abuse towards children? Yes, because they don't want to fuck women. You ever think about that? You ever have those friends that like, I'm like, like, part of me is like, who do you want to fuck? Some people just want to be single or some people life just dealt them a bad hand. You know, like my uncle got divorced once and just never, he was like, nephew, I'm done. (laughs) Fine. There's a million of those. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there are people where you're like, who do you want to fuck? Because you get to a point where you have kids eventually from fucking or you're gay or like you're a a gay guy, which is fine, obviously. But I'm like, Oh, well you want to fuck guys. That's a relief. I, uh, I'm glad it's not uh, kids. And why am I talking so much about kid fucking? Because no one else is in mainstream media. And it's a massive story right now. Massive. It's not that I'm passionate about, People who fuck kids. I'm passionate about injustice. I'm passionate about when a story isn't being told that needs to be told. Like if you're like at a dinner table and some dude just backhands a girl, bam, right in the mouth and her mouth starts bleeding and no one says anything about it. They just keep eating. I would be like, does no one want to talk about what the fuck just happened? And then for the next week, Well, in that scenario, it would be, I could confront the man right then. So this is slightly different, but that's all I talk about for the rest of the week. I'd be like, the guy backhanded a chick and she's bleeding. Now, am I a uh, passionate, am I, am I this activist about uh, domestic abuse? No, I'm an activist about, (laughs) about when, when something's obviously happening and no one will say it because they're fucking pussies. 
It's like in England and Sweden, there are rape gangs for children. Rape gangs. And that isn't the scary part, guys. There's, there's, there's a type of monster for everything you can imagine, you know? But when the police and the government don't do anything about it, that's when you realize you're truly alone. And that's when you have to start talking and acting. That's why, that's one of the reasons we left LA. And for those, like I, I read that, that part of my book, that story, uh, winter solstice about my, uh, my friend who was violently sexually attacked by people that weren't, uh, born here. Just that, that and that, that is a factor. That's not racism. That's not bigotry. That's a fact. And that's an element as to why I don't think they were prosecuted. If it was a, a lacrosse team of white kids at Duke, that's all you'd hear about. But no, there's something not being talked about, that there's a culture of people that have no respect for women, physical uh, respect for women. And all these fucking feminists are trying to make it seem like it's, it's straight white males that are the problem for women. No, it's a culture of people that think that women should wear a potato sack. And that you should cut their clits off so they can't ex- enjoy sex when they're little kids. Cut their clit off. Does this sound vulgar? Yes. It has to be said. Has to be said. And God damn the men that don't do anything. That just are like, just... Scott? Peterman? S- S- Steven? Gary? No one say anything or else we won't get our, our loan to have our own Subway franchise. <laughs> you fucking pussies. So in LA, when a detective came to talk to my friend about it, she went, she'd already went to the hospital, got a, a rape kit done. She was covered, covered in bruises and cuts. It was violent, guys, violent. She knew right where they lived because she had been kidnapped. My now wife, Amy, had been roofied so bad that um, she, had, she was in the hospital. She was found dead on the street. I mean, all signs are pointing to Amy evaded uh, assault, but they were, they were, they were trying. But uh, she managed to claw her way out of wherever they were and uh, just get away. And she ended up on the street. Who knows though? That's a, that, that's one of the worst parts about it. No one knows because she was drugged. But after hearing what happened to her friend by the same people, I, I I'm guessing that Amy avoided it because it, it was monstrous, right? And so the the detective came because Amy didn't have any physical markings, which was huge because uh, these people are animals. And yeah, I will call a group of people animals that gang raped women. And I would do that on CNN and I would look at any of these people in the eye. It's like, oh, a human being. That's the talk of Auschwitz. No, the fuck it isn't. Want to, want to talk about Auschwitz? Auschwitz is putting a goddamn journalist named Tommy Robinson in fucking prison for reporting on something. That's what fucking, that's how you get an Auschwitz. You fucking cunt. Anyway, so the detective took the story. She did the rape kit. She did all of it, had the fluids of five men, her own pictures of just brutality, uh, knew right where they lived and, and they did nothing. And that's when I really felt, there's nothing scarier than feeling alone and vulnerable in a giant city packed with people because there's no accountability. When you're in a small town, that's one of the reasons we moved to a small town and we're going to stay in small areas. Because when you're in a big city, you don't know who the fuck just walked by you, walked by you, walked by you. You don't know anybody. There's no accountability. There's no friend of a friend of a friend. Because it's a certain tipping point of population where everyone can be just fit in. And that draws psychopaths. That draws these people. If you're a psychopath, you want to blend in. You want to go to a place where people don't know your name. They don't know your history. They don't know what you did to cats and dogs in high school. And, and you just set up a, uh, uh, a hunting territory. And you just work. And I saw it. I saw it plain as day. That's when I became very pro-gun. And I'm from a family that didn't have guns. My extended family all has guns. I'm like an odd... I have an odd uh, 
family set up. Like my parents were college professors and my mom is no longer a Democrat, but they were Democrats. My dad's still a Democrat, which is, you know, something you live with. But uh, it's kind of like finding out your, your, your kid's gay. You're like, yeah, I still love you. I still love you, buddy. I want you to have a ha happy life. But, uh, you know, looking forward to the grandkids. It's kind of like me and my dad now when we talk politics. I'm like, dad, I still love you. Obviously, you're my father. A lot of respect for you. But it's really su it really sucks that I've read enough books and, and have enough life, life experience now to know that you're pretty much, you know, wrong about everything politically. But, you know, it's all good. Anyway, but my extended family is, is all right wing with guns and shit. So that's the first time I was like, okay, people need guns. And I'll tell you why they need guns. Because when you feel that, when someone's raped that you care about and the cops aren't there to protect you, I think that there was an order that, that you know, elite, uh, undocumented Mexicans or... Um, Muslims, you know, dudes from uh, from the fucking the fires of Mordor that, that are here don't get reported on because it would look bad politically because we had a uh, Democratic mayor that needed the votes. So five months after the detective came, not with the CSI fucking camera and all the uh, glow in the dark stuff and the, and the lab and everybody's doing stuff. No, he had a pencil. He had a pencil. That was the technology that they were working with. And then there was no prosecution, no files, no charges filed, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I was like, oh, fuck. Because I had no issue before that at all with uh, Muslim immigrants. I never even thought about it. It never entered my fucking mind. Because when I was a kid, we would have... Um, uh, students sometimes stay at our house from all over the world. Spain, Australia... Um, uh, Morocco, Saudi Arabia. There was two Saudi Arabian guys that stayed that were studying. It was uh, Fahad and Abdul. And I, I even, I, I, uh, I made one of them um, like a scarf because I used to uh, have a loom. I used to weave. And he was so nice and they were such good guys that I never had that feeling about Muslims. I never was like, Oh, there's something going on. Granted, now I, I, I do, obviously. Because they've been thrust upon our society without our consent. And it's just bad. But just just know I'm not from a background to, to like be bigoted against people. It's from data. And when you realize that your government would put migrants or immigrants or numbers or anything or just silence above its own citizens you realize that you're 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 your family's hope you that there's lines in the sand and you're like if you come at me i will kill you like i will work for our money and i will provide for you and you're gonna help raise our kid to be strong. And she said this, my wife's the same way. She's like, I will keep Walter safe and talk to Walter and change Walter and put Walter to bed and, and, and all that stuff. You go out there and you fucking bring home meat for us to eat and you make us proud and you be a man that I want him to be. That, that dude earlier was talking about heroes. My wife's like, I'm glad you're fighting the good fight. She's like, because I want my kid to be like, that's what a man is. A man is willing to sacrifice for the safety and prosperity of his family, society, and do what's right in situations that doesn't benefit him like a precious boy. You know, like there's precious boys out there. These precious boys were only the best for me. Look at my new jacket. My new jacket is different than the other boys' jackets. And it's soft and it was $5,000. And I'm a special boy because girls are attracted to me when I wear this jacket. That dude, if our currency flutters, he'd be eaten by just normal men. Just eaten alive. Just <laughs> His jacket would be smeared with blood. <laughs> just the jacket would be used as a tourniquet. Because someone ate his fucking hand. All right, let's get grateful again. Let's uh, let's watch my brother's video again, and then I'll answer some more shit. <coughs> Brother, 
Hello, brother. I love my brother. Let's get grateful. Let's say, you know, would you cut off your thumb for a thousand dollars or a million dollars or a billion, billion dollars? What about a car, like unlimited money? Would you cut off both your hands for all the money in the world, but you can't get your hands back ever? And then I point out, like, today someone lost their hand. Today someone lost their vision. Like, would you go blind for all the money in the world? No? Well, today someone went blind for nothing. So why don't we just get jacked up and pumped to be like, I have hands and I can see. I have pants feet. Pants feet. All right. Uh, white nations that try to not be racist end up uh, in bankruptcy and white genocide. Watch JF and Frame Game stream from last night, which what comes next? Yeah, but that JF guy was talking shit about me, so I'm not going to watch anything he's ever done. Fuck that. Uh, Coder Bear. Oh, plus one for consistence, consistently surprised by pervasiveness of shitty people. Yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Oh, and I could use a lifetime supply of Mounds Bars. Good. Good for you. I'm glad that we had this talk. Jason, just bought my tickets for Eastern Washington show. Super pumped. Do you release the venue yet? No, we are this week. So check your email. And if you don't get the email, uh, email us. Thank you, Analysis Bear. Raymond, happy bladed birthday. How did how did Rand experience go? Uh, oh, uh, it was with Ron Paul. And I left before having the dinner with him because uh, I, did, I just wanted to come home. See my family, but it was fucking great. I, I hung out with Larry Sharp and uh, Adam Kukech and all these dudes. And I did some great talks and I'm going to put them up. They recorded them. So I'm going to, you guys can just watch it. It was a blast. Christopher Langan, highest IQ guy in the world, said it best. ID politics for everyone or no one. Right. That's the problem that a lot of white people are now facing, which I strongly suggest we don't ever participate in identity politics. Because then it's lost. Then we're, then we're tribes. It's like right now white people are put in a position where they, they so a lot of them feel like they have to ha be white identitarians. And I understand that. I just think it's the wrong move. I think it's, it's, it, it isn't sustainable. You're not going to get the most qualified people, the best people, the highest merit. It, people will be tribal based on fucking skin tone and not uh, values, ideals, levels of intelligence, uh, taste in art, just shit that it makes me friends with people. A lot of the worst people in the world are white. That's why I can never be a white identitarian. I'm like, I have nothing in common with some of these white people. I fucking hate them, actually. And then there's black people and Middle Eastern people and obviously Asian, China, the fucking, the, Ori the Orientals that I, I would fucking die for, like some of my friends. Because we've been through a lot together. We have shared experience and shit like that. You know, I can identify as American and have a lot of strong pride in America. That's why, like, you know, you see Tommy Robinson. Much of his friends are black or Middle Eastern and shit, but they're all British. They're all English. Because race is race. Race is like your skin tone or like your fucking race. That's not a good way to categorize people at all. But white people are putting this weird thing now where everybody else is like, well, as a black or as a Hispanic with who knows what it's like to have tight shoes, you, sir, white man, cannot speak on what I've felt. It's like, shut the fuck up. You came here on a bus and you don't even fucking, ha all you have is a backpack and you're a dick. You have a t fucking tattoo on your face and you're going to tell me about how I can't speak on tight shoe problems because you have tight shoes. That sounds hyperbolic. That's pretty much the world we're now living in. So white people then say, well, okay, well, then we're going to have a club. And I know all the arguments. I know the arguments where it's like, well, you uh, defend Israel and Israel's a fucking uh, a, a ethno state and all that shit. I'm like, so? I defend all kinds of shit that I don't want to be. I don't want to be Israel. I don't want America to become like Israel. That would suck. Israel's constantly being threatened. 
And I would not want that. I don't want to fucking uh, have IDs that say like, I don't know, like what religion you are and shit. I, I believe in free, freedom of religion. I believe you should be able to practice uh, Islam in America. I believe that you can build a mosque and pray to whoever you want. That's not the issue. The issue isn't, can you be Muslim or can you be your religion? The issue is, do we have a say in who the fuck comes in our countries? When 99%, like 90, I don't know, it was 9 and 10. I don't remember the exact stat. I was, I've been listening to a lot of Douglas Murray lately. But like when the vast, vast majority of England is like, we don't want any more of these dudes coming to this country. We're already at a, t like, we're already way over capacity. Uh, and the government's like, fuck you. No, more boats, boats. Yeah. Mohammed is the number one most popular name for babies in Ireland right now. Mohammed. Ireland. And they just passed a law that says abortion is now legal. They're fucked. Catholic Ireland. Catholic ass Ireland now can uh, legally abort unborn babies. It's fucking crazy. How'd your conversation with Adam Kokesh go? Great. That was a blast. Really good conversation. I really enjoy conversations like that. I think it's up on his channel, potentially. Hey, Big Bear, your stream helps me get through the workday. Keep up the great work. Can I be verified as Stochastic Bear? Yeah, welcome, Stochastic Bear. I don't know what that means, but I, I like it. Adam, let's get a reading list material for our kids. Start with some from Alex Jones's kid, Rex. He's like the anti-David Hogg. That's hilarious. Red Pill Raccoon. The Illuminati called me and asked me if I was okay with the New World Order, and I said, let me ask the boss, my fat girlfriend. That's hilarious. Just coming from a raccoon, that's really funny. Bronson, also, you should check out the Nassim Taleb. I think you would really like his work. He was as one of the strongest bullshit detectors around. Yeah, I've been told that by a few people now about that guy, so I'm going to look into him. Nassim Taleb. Ken, keep standing tall, Owen. The world needs more men like us to be the men we are. I'm honored to be in the company of greatness. Never bend that knee, brother. I've got your six. Thanks, Ken. Uh, DV Gun Bear. Bearer. I uh, appreciate that. And do, don't don't think that I, I don't find this all very surprising that I'm considered like this ultra masculine dude these days. I was always considered artsy. I consider myself artsy. I consider myself more of a uh, sensitive, I think, on, on certain scales. <laughs> like I was a classical piano player in a world of like men. And in the last 10 years, you just it's just the, the fucking soy. Like men just lost their dicks. Like they have no dicks. Like just by not changing, I am now a strong male role model for, for like young dudes. And that to me is hilarious. Like, I don't know how to fucking build anything good. I don't, if you, if I open a hood of a car, I don't know what a carburetor looks like straight up. I don't know how to frame a house. Um, I, I, like to me, I was, I always considered myself like uh, kind of a pussy. I mean, I always played sports. I, I've been in fights. I fucking, you know, take risks. But compared to like the men I grew up with, I thought I was the one that they'd be like, I, like after the games, like we'd play football or lacrosse and on the bus home, you know, like the real alpha alpha tough men would, would sit with me and be like, yo man, you're like one of those guys I could like talk to about like pussy stuff. Right. And I'm like, go on. He's like, you know, sometimes I cry when I listen to Pearl Jam, bro. You ever do that? I'm like, of course. He's like, Felt really good to admit that to, to somebody. I'm glad you're a pussy. I'm like, Anytime. Art 15, Big Bear, Barefoot wants to hear Hungarian Rhapsody. Play something nice and calm down. Pitts Bear, oh, that's hilarious. Hungarian Rhapsody, is that this one? That's, uh, or is that the Turkish March? Uh, 
Eddie, Owen, you're killing it. I listen to all your streams on the construction site with my crew. It makes for great conversations. Keep it up, man. Oh, that's awesome. See that? I, I love that, man. That's such a good compliment, Eddie. I appreciate that. Because that's kind of my role that I like having. I, I say shit, and then people can talk about it. Like, you don't have to agree with me. It's just, like, I, I'm actually doing what Starbucks and all these people are lying about doing. Like, let's start a conversation about race. Oh, okay. Y you sure? <laughs> They don't want to start a conversation. I really do. I'll say some shit, be wrong about it. Someone will write to me uh, with info I didn't know. Like the Redcoats was a perfect example about how I said that Redcoats is because the, the British had like really bright coats, which is real stupid in war and makes for easy targets. And, and I, I got a, uh, someone let me in that that isn't the case. It was because it, 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 it was like the zebras with the stripes. Like the stripes make them impossible to see as individuals. By predators, if they're in a group, but when they go off, they're dead. It's the same with red coats. Like if you deserted or if you ran away, you could be picked off. And also there weren't snipers then. And the musket fire was so thick that it really wasn't an issue to like have a stripe on your, or like a big hat because they didn't have the weaponry, which I knew, but I didn't put it together. I didn't put it together that there weren't snipers back then. That like uh, those they, they just fucking pointed and shot at, like, the big red shit. I don't know. I thought it was fascinating. Keep up the free speech. Guy be called Garden Variety Bear. Welcome, Garden Variety Bear. Glenn Beck often has on Tim Ballard and Operation Underground Railroad. Ex-Special Ops and CIA saving 600 kids and 300 traffickers arrested. Real heroes. Yeah, I plugged them the other day. Uh, someone wrote to me about them that's involved with them, and that's really cool. So let me just plug them again. Operation Underground Railroad, Tim Ballard. Yeah, people actually doing shit. I love when people actually do shit. Roy Bear. Stefan Molyneux tweeted out how they rule you embedded in his tweet. It's making the rounds on the twatter. 19,000 views are... Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, that's, that's. I'm glad he did that. That's great. I figured he'd, he'd like it. I actually emailed it to him this morning because he loves music. And he's had Tommy on. And I think that... I just figured that he would appreciate the song. So I'm, that, that's awesome. Because I'm permanently banned from Twitter, as you all know. So... If you ever uh, see anything that you like that I've done, please tweet it out because um, I used to have a pretty massive following on Twitter, Twitter and uh, they Tommy Robinson me. <laughs> they came for me in the night. Do you think the, re uh, the high-ranking Dems are evil on purpose or accident? To me, it seems they are so greedy, they are real evil and deny obvious truths. I think what it is is almost like one of those movies where something bad happens and to cover up the bad thing, it goes worse and worse and worse. And it just keeps getting worse. Where every lie cover up makes it worse and worse and worse. Until you're to the point where you're just... I think a lot of dictatorships are like that. Like Julius Caesar. People don't understand that he had to become emperor and dissolve the Senate and all that shit. Because if he didn't, he would have stood trial from his political enemies and have been killed. That's why he was uh, the speaker of the plebs. For so long because it was it was giving him uh, political immunity that's why as much as i i despise hillary clinton i didn't want her prosecuted because that would have set a precedent that the person who loses the presidential race will go to jail which uh would be really bad because historically when that happens um like caesar's enemies and they used to do it all the time in uh rome where if you had power and then lost power you're dead so in order for Caesar to not die, he literally had to just keep conquering people and then he had to take over all of Rome. And I think that a lot of Democrats are like that, where it starts off with, that's why do not ever take the knee on, on issues. Because once you do, it opens up a chain of events that you have no control over eventually and then you will become uh, absolutely a, a weapon of other people. I'll give you an example. Like, um, let's say someone says, uh, we, we want to pass this legislation to, uh, I can't think of a, a good example right now, but just, just something small. And, and they're like, oh, okay. I mean, I, I think that's a bad idea, but we, okay, we can do that. And then, and then you're now in bed with somebody else because of this thing. Like, oh, okay, for example, the uh, school system. Like the school board wants to pass, they want to pass a thing that says that uh, they exclusively buy books from one book company. 
And it's a $300 million. This is a true story in New York, by the way. $300 million contract with one book producers. And let's say you're a politician who's like, that sounds like a bad idea. And they're like, our budgets, man, our budgets are so fucking tight that this will this will save it. Do you not like kids? Do you not want kids to be able to read books? Because we will not have as many books if we don't pass this. And look at this outrage. Do you hate black people? Do, oh, you want to kill gay people? You know, all the normal shit. So they're like, okay, I'll, I'll go with that. And so now you're only getting books from one company. So that means that company has a real monopoly on, on um, information. This could also be applied to Google or a million other things. So then now you're only getting information from this company. Now let's say this company now has an agenda and starts two different things. One, money, another ideology. What if they start sending books about how uh, there's 70 genders and, uh, you know, all this postmodern nonsense. And then they start raising the price of the books. And, and your policy now is you can't buy books from anyone else. So there's no free market. So now they can just gouge you. This has happened over and over. This is not a made up story. That's why college textbooks are like 200 bucks for a, a book. And, and they'll get these weird side door contracts with uh, professors where the professor, you have to buy the book and it's $200. So you start going down that path, you get to the point where you're just okaying anything because now your job, like you won't win, like you won't get the same backing you had to get elected as before if you, uh, if you, uh, you know, fall back on any issue. And once you, once you cross the line with your own ethics and once you do something that you know is wrong, other people can tell you did that. And now they'll take extra, extra offense if you back down. Like if you're willing, like with your kid, I'm a sucker with my kid. So my kid will come up to me and he goes, jump or tuta. And that means I play the song tequila. And I just swing him and he jumps and he pretends he's a frog. He goes, raba for ribbit. And we'll do it 10 song, like 10 times in a row. We do it all the time. Right. And so I'm starting to sweat. And he's like, more, as soon as it's done. So then, -da 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 -da, as soon as it's done, more. And finally, I'm like, no, buddy, I, I, daddy needs to hang out with mommy. We're just going to sit and talk like mommies and daddies do. And he's like, tuta. And I'm like, no, 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 tuta later. He's like, tuta. And I'm like, click. -da 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 -da. Okay, once, once he sees that, that all he has to do is ask a bunch of times, and then I'll, I'll finally do it. He fucking owns me. So I'm trying not to do that now. Now when I say no, I, 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 it's so hard though because he's such a sweetheart. And, it, and I know that there's going to be a time when I really, really miss Tuta. And I love doing Tuta. But there are times when I'm literally sweating. And I'm like, I can't do tequila again. And he's like, Tuta, more. And then he'll squee squ squeal with laughter and delight. Like I know he loves it. But I'm like, dude, I just want to sit for a little bit. And so now when I'm like, no more, and then he's like, dad, 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 please, please, dad, dad. And sometimes I, like in the past, I've, I've gotten him to count so that he earns the tuta. And he'll be like, two, three, three, four, five. Like, and it's so fucking adorable that I, I, I'm just like, oh, and just do another tuta. But I'm like, we just did a hundred tutas and the big bear's back hurts because tall people, you know, have back issues typically. And as soon as, if I start going back on my word, of no, then forever he's just going to always ask until he knows that he can wear me down. And so it's the same with this type of shit. If you're a politician or you're a person and you agree to something everyone knows you don't believe in, they'll never stop. They'll just know that if they shame you hard enough or, or oh, and you got to try a massage butter or a foam roller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, foam roller. I hate, I, I don't like being touched by strangers, but foam roller for sure. All right, this is Bunny Bear. Made a friend in a grieving parents group. He cried and asked for advice. All lies. Never had a child. He stole my meds and money. His excuse was addiction. Evil exists. We just need to vet people now. I have. Wow, that's horrifying, Bunny. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, and people in pain or good people can sometimes be the easiest marks. And that's fucking infuriating. So I'm sorry that that guy did that to you. That's unimaginable to be that person. But... That's the thing. There comes a time when you can't just say, I never thought that person could exist. 
You know, and I think for me it was being a being a father because I can't. Me and my brother have this saying called in, uh, uh, "insert theory when needed," where we can be doing something that we know isn't quite good, but we'll figure out an argument why it's the right move. Where it's like, yeah, we we've been drunk three nights in a row together, but you know we work hard. Like beer tastes better after a hard day, and I mean. Anybody who doesn't understand that working men need to relax and just have some beers, you know, and we're tall, so we can't just have one beer. We need eight beers. People that aren't our height don't get, that's, that's called theory insertion. So theory insertion is a blast until you have someone who um, depends on you and you love and is wicked, innocent and good. And um, so I can't really insert theory anymore. I can't be like, I have to be like, what's the right answer? Because if not, that kid's in danger. The number was 97% of Brits from the Douglas Murray talk. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Skills don't make a man. Conviction to principles make a man. Skills can be learned and acquired at any age in life. Carry on, Owen. Thank you, Marcus. Very nice. Hi, Big Bear. Don't know if you know, but a nice thing to hear is that there's a petition at change.org to free Robinson that's almost at 500,000 names. Yeah, this could go really well, guys. This is the thing. If, if there's enough outcry, there, we don't need to like revolt and have violence in the streets because no one wants that. As much as like you may have these like weird, dark fantasies in your mind of people finally just fucking starting to shoot people and in the government and just taking back uh, your country and all that. It's, it's always horror. Always. Ask anyone who's been in war. It's like it's never a good time. That's always uh, the act of a desperate people. And, and when you see that there's no legal way to do anything and no one cares about your vote, no one cares about shit and they can imprison Tommy Robinson, you start realizing that violence is so close because if a people have no peaceful way of doing something, they have to be violent. So if there's enough, uh, public response, like what you just said about 500,000 names, you know, you got people like me, People like Molyneux, people like Gavin, people like um, just tons of people uh, talking about this dude. If they let him go now, it'll be a huge win. It'll be a huge win because the thing about fascists is they they can't do that. Like the Hitlerian Stalin-esque type, which is what England just became, by the way. If they cave to public outcry... It's just like what I was talking about with Tuta. The public then knows that they can change, change, change what's happening, that they can ask for more. They can push the government to do something and they can, they just haven't like if enough people got pissed enough and if enough people realized that, that, that media is bullshit and now that's happening because people on the left in England are starting to be pissed off about what happened to Tommy Robinson, people that can't stand Tommy Robinson are starting to be like, but this isn't England. This can't happen. Cops are, are feeling this way. British paramilitary guys are feeling this way. Like, this is a real moment. Because Tommy, the odds of Tommy dying in jail are over 50%, I would give it. Because uh, I think th that was one of their plans, A, and B, they, they want to kill him. There's a fatwa on Tommy Robinson. So... If they now let him out, that'll be a huge win and a big moral morale booster for uh, for free speech and, and freedom in general because people will then see that they have power. You know, that, that they can push a government because a government is nothing. A government is an idea. It's like money or a corporation. They're just ideas. They're just words. You can just... Whew, you can push over governments with... Uh, with words, with, with, uh, with, with, you don't, there's no one to shoot. That's why I don't want violence because, okay, who do you shoot? You shoot cops? No, that's the problem with, with, with these, uh, vampiric type organizations. That's why I don't like, uh, the Catholic church is because it, it, it's a step away from, um, the Bible and God and, and good and evil. And it's, it's, it's an institution. That's why I don't like uh, the way public education is run. It's an institution. That's why I don't like um, 
what's happening in England. Because it, the, the cop who arrests him, do you, do you kill that guy? No. Do you kill him? He's got a family. He probably is like, I fucking, I can't believe they made me fucking arrest Tommy. But what am I going to do? I got fucking kids to feed. Fuck. And then, so you go above him. Do you kill the chief? Do you kill the, the people in the, the house who voted? Certain directions. Like, who's responsible? That's the problem with big government. That's the problem with socialism. It's vampiric. It takes human beings, human beings that do what they don't want to do. And it starts with the littlest uh, act of compliance, and it just escalates from there. I'm not willing to say these people deserve a uh, death sentence. I don't think anyone should be shooting these cops or shooting these government people. I think they should um, not, just not comply. I think that the way to really scare a vampiric institution like the British government, a fascist in institution, is don't comply because there's very few of them and a ton of you. And so if you don't comply and it becomes, and, and the whole like right wing fucking Nazi shit doesn't work anymore because the average left wing person is like, dude, Owen Benjamin is not a fucking, that, that's why they hate me because it's, it's impossible to call me a Nazi. There's no point in my life that I've advocated uh, racial policies or, dude, I'm a quarter Jewish I've just never, it's not even fucking close. I despise socialism. I don't like big governments. I, uh, I, I don't advocate the force, like the force on people in any way. So that's why when enough people of your political opposition start no longer falling for the nonsense and being like, Owen Benjamin, a Nazi? Uh, no. And enough people do that with me. Enough people have been in, a TV show with me or toured with me or seen me over the years or had beers with me or whatever, that it's real. It's a real hard sell for a guy like me. And, uh, and that's necessary. And right now that's happening in England. Tommy, you can sell people on some shit with Tommy Robinson, but not that much, not enough to say you can take his freedom. You know, there's people that are like, Tommy's a wanker, but he doesn't deserve no fucking prison time. And that's when things can really change. All right, I'm spending way too much time on each super chat or else I'll be here all fucking day. That's all right. Networking Barrett. We need a Starbucks re-education song in memoriam of Star Cucks. That's funny. Sensitivity training today. I, I'll have to work on that because that's a great idea. I don't want to just wing it. It's Star Cucks. It's hilarious. By the way, are you going to keep rocking the beard? Um, no, I'm going to trim it. Because when it gets this long, I start rubbing it too much. Big Bear, I just became an uncle and godfather. I'm fucking terrified, by the way, of the world. Thank you for what you do. Much love to your awesome family. If you weren't terrified, you're not paying attention. But that's why we talk about these things every day and and um, and figure out what you believe and, and stuff like that. Because then you can act in a non-terrified manner. Because terrified people are very easy to control and manipulate. So, And congrats, by the way. Wait, become a dad. But then things get real intense. Mail or plan day four mail? I don't want to miss it. Mail or plan day... Oh, I should do... I'll do mail tomorrow. I'm sorry, I forgot mail again. I got to pile it and do it. How do we fix it? I don't know what that's referring to. Love listening to your stuff. If you haven't heard of Sargon of Akkad, I think you dig what he has to say. Can I be no one bear? Yeah, welcome no one bear. I'm O one. You're no one. Uh, yeah, I've listened to Sargon. He's great. He's uh, he was gonna be on this one day. We're emailing, and then I, I I'm I'm fucking horrible horrible sometimes at following up on emails and stuff. But I uh, I dig what he's saying. He has a real gentle voice. Did you ever do a show in Indianapolis at Crackers? Yes, my cousin was the MC for many years. The late Jeff Arnold. I don't remember the name, but I've done Crackers many times. Uh, all right, let me check out um, the PayPal's. There was a time when you let me know. I, oh, I'll play you guys the Tommy song again right now. Because the Bears helped write it. And I made sure I put that in the description because I really don't like unearned praise. And a bunch of people were like, dude, this is fucking great. And I'm like, I hope people know that I it wasn't just me who wrote this. This is an unbearable production. <laughs> so uh, 
thank you for all the people who gave me some of these amazing lines because they're just true. That's the beauty of when you're with a group of people, the best writing, the best creativity, the best businesses, because a business venture is creative, is when, um, is when people have a shared idea or goal and that way it isn't personal. It isn't about like, are you using my line or someone else's line or can I get my thing in there? It's about like, what's the best one? And that's why I'm pretty good at doing these live streams and being the point man, like being the QB, because... You can trust that I'm trying to find the right shit and I'm just, cause you need someone just to organize all the good shit and then put it in a format. And uh, I'm sure I missed a lot of great lines. I'm sure I probably made some of the bad calls, but in general, it's a fucking great song. So let me see. And I don't usually do non comedy songs, but I was like, but this is just comedy. A lot of times is comedy because it's just so true. It's funny. This is so true. It's sad. <clears throat> It goes, uh... I heard there was a secret court where journalists weren't allowed to report. But you don't really care for freedom, do ya? It goes like this without the fifth. The gavel falls and they cuff your wrist. It's not okay that this is how they rule ya. 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 time they tried to kill him but he endured you they need the votes for the growing state and won't stop who their voters rape it's not okay that this is how they rule you how they rule you how they rule you how they rule you how they rule let you know who's really coming to your shores but now they don't tell the story ever true yeah the state tries to say it's all racial hate but really it's a fear of a caliphate but the state doesn't care because this is how they rule you called how they rule you good tune see what i mean though about how sometimes um being honest is funny and sometimes being honest is super sad and that's fun. that's a sad ass song all right when we do a show in southwest florida soon i thought I, we're looking into that i i'm I've, I've got a lot on my plate right now with these three shows coming up because i'm writing a lot of new jokes for you guys i don't want to uh I always want to give people that are fans of mine and have been watching me for a long time something new every live show I do. So I've been focused a lot more on the show than I have uh, touring and booking more shows. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but it just is. I, I, I write a lot and I'm still finishing this book. All right, let me read some of these. Uh, PayPal.me slash Feed the Bear. 
Uh, we got some good ones. All right, this is from Jesse. Hey, Owen, you were talking about ticks yesterday. You mentioned they really have no predators. Your brother would probably be happy to know that possums are the tick vacuum cleaners. Ooh. Possums eat more ticks than all other animals in the woods combined. No BS. Never kill possums. Inspector Bear. That, I do my, I'm going to tell that to my brother immediately. He's going to be so pumped. Uh, Pinder, what's up, man? Owen, I don't... I know you don't care if people are pissed off about the new Tommy Robinson song, but the fact that you received any dislikes for writing about someone's freedom being removed while child rapists go free is just exposing the truth about how the UK is gone. That being said, I get really volatile when I think, what if they try this in Texas? I make no apologies for my YouTube rants uh, this weekend. And I will say it again. If Islam tries to bring Sharia to my front door, I will fucking shoot them dead and bury their corpses in pig blood. Oh, and I know you won't back down and neither will I. Yeah, well, that's why they're not doing it in Texas. And I think you just answered your own question. It's when evil only exists when good people take knees. And that doesn't mean, I don't even have to say this. It's almost embarrassing. It's almost like a, a dig at my own audience to, to have to say this, but because it's not to you guys. I know you know this. And it's, uh, it's pretty much just for the random person right now watching that, that was raised horribly and, it, it, and has no concept of morality. But obviously it doesn't mean go attack Muslim people. That's fucking obvious, guys. Uh, it means call out crimes. And if people stop calling out, crime, call, calling off, calling out crimes, you got a problem. And you got to close the fucking borders. It's true. And we would not have this problem if, if the leftists just followed the, the law. This insane hostility against Islam right now is defensible. Like, there's a reason people do this. And it's not because uh, they're brown or they're slightly different than you. Is anyone like this about Buddhists? Islam's way closer to Christianity and, and Judaism than it is Buddhism. Buddhism's way out there. Buddhism's way different. So if it's about... The other. Are you othering me? It, why? Because I'm different? Uh, no one gives a shit about Shintoism. No one's like, down with the Shintos. Because they're not coming in on rafts and fucking your kids. And so, it's just about, if, if more people were like Tommy Robinson, this wouldn't be happening. Because it also goes without saying that the rape gangs and the pedophiles in the, in the Muslim community are not the majority. They're a small minority. But when your own people don't call out the sick dogs, it's, it's totally understandable to assume you're all sick. That's why trust in the media and trust in government and trust in community is so important. Because without trust, you have to assume it, all of them. It's like if you know that the people responsible for your safety will not protect you, uh, you have, you have to assume, okay, like, um, okay, cops, less, a tiny amount of cops are like these brutal Serpico type characters that the media was uh, really portraying them to be with this, with the hard Black Lives Matter movement early on. Tiny, tiny, tiny group. And um, th the thing I thought that was, that, that was more problematic than than the actual incidences themselves, because the incidents were so rare. It's when n no one, like an obviously bad act wasn't prosecuted, was the only argument I saw for Black Lives Matter. Where if someone blatantly executed somebody or, or shot somebody, not, I'm not talking about Michael Brown. That guy just punched the cop. Yeah, you're going to die if you punch a fucking cop, dude. It's just a fact. I'm talking about there, there are some really horrific crimes that have happened. And if the cop isn't prosecuted, then the population starts thinking, oh, so they won't police themselves. Like they will, there will never be justice when something like that happens. Therefore, we can't trust them. And I think in the case of the police, it's so much less than in like the case of uh, these Muslim migrants. It's like the, the, the cases of uh, the real problem with the police are the, a lot of the laws that they're forced to enforce. Uh, like if, if you if someone has weed in their car and they can then take 
the car. Like, that's fucking crazy. But that's not the cop. That's the law. And the cop's job is to enforce the law. So I have the problem with the law. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> a lot of the Muslims that came to America in the 70s <coughs> have none of these problems. Because they came here with the desire for freedom and they assimilated. The problem now is this uh, New World Order horseshit where they're protected and they don't have to uh, assimilate at all. They don't have to respect the, uh, the population, the culture, nothing. And if any of the local population is like, hey, can you just learn our language? They're, that guy's called racist. And that's the whole reason that now people are like, okay, no more Muslims. And they have a right to do that. Because the, the, the rule of law is so flawed now that we can't trust it. We can't trust when, when my friend is fucking gang raped and the cops don't do anything about it because there's a, a Democratic mayor. And we all know if it was a bunch of white frat guys, it would be on the cover of Time magazine. It makes you know that you're not safe. And so I know that I don't want to be around undocumented immigrants here. Not because I have a racial hatred of them. It's because I know that I can't call the cops and have them do anything. So if one in a thousand is, is here to hurt me, normally if there's rule of law, I, I, I can roll out those dice. That's fine. But if you know that, that the government won't protect you from that one guy, then you got to, they all have to go. That's why people are upset. It's not race. It's not fucking xenophobia. It's literally like, if, if you don't protect us from these people, we don't want any of them because we won't know who the bad one is. Cause normally the bad one's the one in jail. The, the child rapist is the one in prison. Now it's like that child rapist could be that guy or that guy or that guy. Like there is no way of, uh, of telling. And that's the real problem. Hey Owen, sorry the stream started off a little crazy. So I thought I'd share my thanks for the part you play uh, in my day. To make a very long story short, recently my sister's health was kind of iffy for a bit. My grandmother's health is currently declining and my dad has found out he has to get bypass surgery. Uh, for obvious reasons, I wasn't having the best weekend, but thankfully a wonderful family from my church invited me over for the afternoon and I got to have family time with them. I played with the kids in the backyard while dinner was being made and then we all b uh, bumped a volleyball around in a circle while everything was in the oven. We even got the three-year-old involved. We all sat down and whenever the ball bounced outside the circle, we got to run after it and return it for us. The three-year-old, that's awesome. We played games inside and outside. We held hands as we blessed the food and we stayed up till 10 p.m. talking and laughing. It felt good. Dude, this is awesome. I'm glad I'm, I'm reading the whole thing. It felt good to have a small distraction from all the craziness in life. And I'm being honest. I think the mom and the family knew I was struggling a little and wanted to help. They're the kind of people that I would literally do anything for, and I pray daily for self-control if anyone hurts any of them. Anyway, all of that's neither here nor there. The point is, you sharing your small moments with your family is like afternoons with that family. It's like remembering the sunshine on a cloudy day. Yes, it's still cloudy, but I know something better is out there. Sometimes I get sun, sometimes I get rain, but the reminders from people I surround myself with puts everything into focus. Much love, Professor Bear. James. Wow. What a wonderful, wonderful email, brother. And thank you for that. I, uh, that's why I do it. So I'm really glad that you see that. It's like, I, I've been exactly where you're at. We all have. And that's why I like to, uh, I like to show honest frustration, unfiltered frustration, because that's, I think a lot of people are missing that in their life where someone just has a, can just be pissed. And be like, these fucking trolls. Because that's not abusive anger. That's not, uh, it's just true. And at the same time, I, I like to show just moments with my brother, moments with my wife, moments with my kids. Because um, it reminds people what life is. And these distractions, these like vampires can't take that from us when we have community. And the physical community right now is deteriorating, but we've formed our own. And hopefully this continues into real life. And that's why I like doing live shows a lot because it's, it's real, it's live. There's eye contact and hugging and high fives and laughter. That's why comedy, socialism can't survive comedy. That's why comedy has a hard time surviving in socialism because they can't live together. 
Comedy is the rejoicing in our flaws. Comedy is the honest words that, that, that make people squeal with laughter. Comedy is a break from all the political correctness that we do in life, which there is a place for. There is a place for that. There is a place when you're at work to not talk about politics or not to say fuck when you stub your toe. There, I believe in that. I believe in self-censorship. But it has to be your choice. And if you don't, the per people have a right to not want you around. Shunning is a great way to handle people that don't follow social etiquette. And that's fine. My problem with political correctness is when it's enforced by the government. My problem with political correctness is when it ruins art. It's not about, do I think everyone should just act like me on a live stream all day? No, this is a, a, a place of relief, hopefully. That's what I try to do. And that's, that's, that's my goal. Is, is I want a place where, where people can experience the rawness of frustration as well as the beauty of family, as well as talking to each other and, and learning about history and music and comedy and stuff like that, because that's, that's the flame in our society that has to keep going in darkness. Because there's no kids playing in the street anymore. You know, in my, back in my, in, when I was a kid, my parents could let me run uh, at, the, at the college where they, where my dad taught when I was eight, I could just run and play alone through the library, play hot, like just hide places, explore, climb things, run to another uh, building, run around. And, and no one was worried back then because we, we just trusted that if someone saw me, they weren't going to hurt me. Like there was a, there was an underlying trust in society that like, if you saw a kid, you'd watch out for the kid. Your neighbor would watch out for your, your son. You watch out for your neighbors, just people around. It wasn't this sense of everyone could be my enemy. And that comes from uh, a government that won't prosecute based on race and religion and all this shit. It's like, I, I get why parents don't let their kids run around and play anymore because the monsters are real. And, it, and if, but it's such an important part of childhood. It's an important part of childhood to, uh, to, have, to be alone, to, to get hurt, to climb, to know that no one knows where you are and you'll come home. And I'm so blessed that I had that childhood and I had those communities and we're trying to do that now with, on this chat. Like you can make your own community. You can get through shit, you know? Hey, Big Bear, I hope you do a show in Chicago again soon. I couldn't make it back in March. Could you please try to play Lick My Love Pump from Spinal Tamp? It's real short, but I find it too tricky. Thanks. Bye. Fight the good fight. Well, I'll work on it in the, when I'm off, but yeah, that, that's, a, that's a hilarious movie. Sam, great job, Owen. Every time I see your streams, I think to myself how proud I would be to have a son like you. I'm sure your mom's heart is bursting with pride and joy. Thanks for standing up for the good. Yeah, my mom is proud of me. Super proud of me. My dad... Uh, <laughs> He's proud of me, I think, kind of. But I think he, uh, I think he thinks I ruined my career, and I don't think he understands why. And we try to have those conversations, but there's a real uh, miscommunication with that, and that's okay. I mean, part of maturity is being like, that's okay that he doesn't understand. That's fine. I still love him. I like th that's a way to, to to keep relationships. Is he's not doing it to hurt me. His intention isn't to hurt me. He just has no idea why I would do this. He's like, you were doing so good. Like you were at the best agency. You had just sold a book to a publishing company that everyone I worked for would kill to be a part of. Like that was prestige. That was money. Why would you? And he's like, just don't say your, all your opinions. And I'm, it's just that divide where I'm like, he's watching out for his boy. He want, he, he saw me doing really well in a very competitive uh, business and wanted me to continue doing that. And I am like, dad. And then I'm just like, I love you pops. Want to play Scrabble? He's like, oh yeah, okay. And then we're fine. We don't have to fucking always understand each other. He's a 76 year old man. It's like, he doesn't get some of this stuff. Fuck it. David, 
Since we're on the topic of Tommy, what do you think about him claiming to be a Zionist? What do you, what do you think about him claiming to be a Zionist? I've heard in the conspiracy theory circles that Zionists are evil Jews that run the world. Uh, I don't think he claims to be a Zionist, and I don't think most people know what Zionist means. I don't know about anything that you just wrote. I think the real Zionist threat is called a caliphate. And uh, I know that this shit really uh, ruffles people's feathers. So naturally, I will then talk about it because I know it ruffles people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I, this, this, the, the whole Jew hate thing, just know I'm never going to be on board that. So you can say all you want in the chat. You can say all you want about like, you're scared of the truth. Look into the truth. I, I guarantee I know more than, the, than most of these people about the very thing that um, they're telling me I, I, I'm, I haven't looked into. Was the creation of Israel shady? Kinda. <laughs> Was the creation of America kinda shady? Yeah, that always happens. That's always gonna be the case. And the whole fucking... A nation state itself is shady. Always. So, if people are this fucking obsessed with Israel, what about, I don't know, France? Or fucking Italy? Sicily wasn't excited about that. That was an annexed. There was a lot of bloodshed. There's bloodshed with the creation of all states. That's why dudes like Stefan Molyneux and Dave Smith and all these guys fucking hate the state. There's a reason. Show me one state that, that was just like this great starting point that didn't have some sort of fucking weird shady shit going on. There's none. Like even just look at England. Look up the history of England. Like the Saxons and the fucking Normans and the fights and the blood and the thefts and the rape and the fucking what country isn't like that that's why this weird double standard with israel where they're like look into the i dude the fed freaks me out i think funding wars is fucking twisted i think the reason there were some jewish families hey hey stop that that would get involved in shit like funding wars is because jews weren't allowed to own land so they started to get into uh abstract abstract uh, ways of making money, like um, service, a lot of service, like accounting, uh, lawyers, doctors, all that shit, and also banking. Because if, if you're not allowed to have the land be your wealth, you have to have something else be your wealth. And so, yeah, they got really into uh, numbers and, and currency exchanges and trading and shit like that. And it's not the first and only culture to ever do that. There's been a million to do that. And, and a lot of times they do get killed when shit goes south. But uh, yeah, the Fed's fucking weird. I, I There's a lot of shady shit that happened in World War I. But I don't think people know, understand what, the, what Zionism means. It's like the global... What the fuck does that mean? People are like, New World Order. No, it's... it's you know, that You're avoiding the real issue. The real issue is nothing happens unless people comply to nonsense. And whether it's a caliphate or this Zionist thing that I don't think most people really understand, myself included. And I've read books on the shit now. Um, or what else the threat? Socialism. What else the threat? I don't fucking know. Obesity. High diabetes. Fucking ticks. <laughs> like what the threat is, is a person's ability to, to kneel to comply with force in order to get more money or prestige. And every time that happens, it doesn't matter what it is. You could have a Zionist type thing around anything. Anything can be that. Anything can be uh, an attempted world domination. Anything. You could have um, a Dungeons and Dragons club get real evil and start being like, we should be the only Dungeons and Dragons club in the world. And we'll stop at nothing until we get what we want. And then just, I mean, that sounds preposterous, but that's, uh, that's the same thing. It's, it's just the, the concept of collectivizing, world domination, making people cattle. That's not, to say that that's only one group of people is to comply to the fucking whole problem. 
Like, like just saying like, oh, it's the Jews or it's just the Muslims or it's just the socialists or it's just the, this Dungeons and Dragons club is, it is to be a part of the whole thing that, that makes it possible. It's to say that, that there's just one thing that we have to get rid of. And once we do that, we will have what utopia. No, every fucking problem is a fight in every person's heart every day. Like we're all part evil. That's the concept of original sin. I never used to like original sin. Neither did my mom. My, my, my mom used to call it the entrance in the Christian community because she didn't want to say that uh, her babies had sin for their existence. Because she was like, I held you in my arms and I said, this baby is perfect. This is not, there's no sin here. So that's why I was the uh, entrance in the Christian community was what she called, called it. Because it wasn't, an, she didn't want to acknowledge original sin. I acknowledge original sin because I think my mom would actually agree with me on this. It's, it's the acknowledgement that everyone has the ability of being corrupted and being evil. And that's the only way you can possibly not be evil or corrupted is to acknowledge that it's in you. We all could have been soldiers at Auschwitz. We all could have been the prisoners of Auschwitz. It's just, it's true. And, and unless you know that, that you're genetically just as capable that you're genetically just as capable as as anyone in being a, uh, a, a an absolute monster. You'll you'll for sure become one. All right, I'll read the last super chats and then I'll I'll get out. I just realized we're over two hours, and um, but it really turned around. The beginning of the stream sucked, and then it became fucking great. Uh, Bunny, the horror happened before my awesome husband vetted within an inch of his life. Drug addicts will lie about anything, but he was a sociopath. I have a great life now. That's awesome. Good to hear. Analysis Bear. Thank you, buddy. Water Bear. You should try to get someone like Freedom Tunes to animate something for this song. Help it go viral. God bless, bro. Yeah, I got to email that dude back today. Seamus. I love that dude. I'm going to do a voice on one of his things. Hey, Big Bear. How do we preserve uh, societal pressure within communities in a day and age where communication happens on a global scale? And the local scale is ignored by so many. That's the question. I, I honestly don't know. I think what Professor Bear just described with that family, they, they brought him in and, and they, they were playing their bump and volleyball and the three-year-old's getting the ball and, and they're eating together and sharing. It, it truly has to be choice now. It has to be just valuing it. That's why, that's why I do tree work. You know, there was a time when I lost my agent when I was doing tree work because I was fucking broken in debt and I had bills to pay. And uh, now I do tree work because it makes me feel really good physically to, to have a hard day's work. And uh, I love being around my brother. It's a choice. I make enough money now where I don't ever have to do tree work. But I, yesterday I, I hauled brush up a giant like outdoor staircase. My brother, we're, we're giving this woman a, we topped a bunch of trees so she could see this awesome lake just covered in sweat and sap and, and and just dirt and just hanging with my bro. I wouldn't, I, I, I choose that. I think a big mistake that people make is they're like, oh, I no longer have to work. Well, what if you love your work? What if you love your coworkers? What if you love the feeling of complete, completing a difficult task? Then you should still do it. There is no end game to life. There is no like, um, Finish line. There is no place where you're like, oh, all right, I'm done now. Now I'm happy. Now I can just be happy. It's like, what do you like? Do you like being around people? Do you like having picnics? Do you want to know your neighbors better? Then knock on their door. Say, hey, what are you up to today? You know, you want to you want to barbecue our kids? Let's have our kids uh, play in the backyard. Remember when we used to do that back before uh, the internet? Let's just do it. That's what it is. It's, 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 because humans are so good at, at making life easier in a great way. Penicillin, airplanes, love it. But what if we liked the struggle? Like what if we were like, uh, we get to a point where we're at now when we're like, remember when things were harder and you reminisce on that and you're like, man, like my grandfather would never be capable of thinking that way. There was no one alive in the 1920s, 1930s in Benton, Wisconsin, or Galena, Illinois, in the fucking mines, that was like, hey Gary, 
Remember what it felt like to have a hard day's work? No, it was literally like, I need, I'm down, my, my grandfather quit drinking. He was an alcoholic. He drank a fifth of whiskey every single day. He said he had one dime to his name and he could barely afford bread. And my mom was a baby or my mom was a toddler, I think. And he just said, I'm never drinking again. And he, he got a job being a security guard at night because he couldn't sleep because of his shaking. And he never really told anyone. He just quit. And that was it. Those dudes never thought this way. So we, we've passed a point. We've passed a marker where things really have changed. Because we no longer are thinking like, is this next technological invention going to... We no longer think like, oh, I'm so excited about this ne next technological invention. It's going to make life even more exciting and better and easier. We're, we're past that. We're now like, oh, another invention? Is this the end? That's where we're at now. It started with the nuclear bomb. That was the first time it happened. The bomb happened. Don't get me wrong. Like the horseless carriage and shit, people would be like, ho, ho. But it still it made life easier. It made life better. It, it, there, was, there was another um, pollution back then. It was horse shit. Dude, people were getting sick and dying from all the horse shit in cities. So every fucking environmentalist has to pump the brakes a little. So the, the nuclear bomb changed the face of warfare. So did in World War I, uh, the invention of a million inventions changed the face of war. So now war was no, that changed war forever. The, the trench warfare with, um, with uh, mustard gas and uh, fucking barbed wire and all that shit. War used to be like your alpha males would go compete and the winners would be like celebrated and you'd have like plumage and it was about bravery and all that shit. And then it became about bean counting. It became about, did we only lose 70,000 men today or 68,000? 68, 68,000? Oh, good day. Good day. A meat grinder. It was just about numbers. That's when the leaders stopped sending their children into war. World War II is Korea. After that, you don't see, like, you don't see, uh, see world leaders sending their kids into war anymore because it's not about, I'm going to, uh, um, bravery and shit. I mean, it is clearly like the Marines, these people are beyond brave to face this, but sometimes it's just about fucking numbers and meat grinding. And that's happened with communication. Now it was linking the world phones, you know, email, no way. Now it's like, this constant dopamine drip of likes and approval and, and everyone's exposed and people are just like, stop. And that's why my social media is a two hour and 19 minutes of just one dude talking because that will help your brain for real. I, I wouldn't do this if I thought it was bad for people. Long form podcasts, long form YouTubes, long form just interacting like this. Uh, is good for your brain because it doesn't, it's not that like dopamine, click, click, click bullshit, exposure bullshit. It's just a dude talking and it, it'll slow down the, the pace of your thoughts so you can reflect and have nuance and shit like that versus this world of just ba 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 bye Geico, bye Geico, you're racist, bye Geico, you're racist, bye Geico. All right, I'm losing my mind. I got to land the plane here. I got three more to read. Uh, I looked outside the garbage man going by. I said to my girlfriend, what a hero. She asked... Was it the garbage man or the recycling man? Ego versus ego. Interesting. Uh, I got to take some time to think about that. Owen, you don't have to look at this, but you can if you want. Paste bid. All right. Well, I will later. I got to go. Pump the brakes, warrior tribe. They're the worst. Oh, you guys are, I guarantee you guys are just arguing about Jews again. It's just so dumb. It's such a waste of fucking time. Just know just know that when you do that in the chat, that's why I fucking read super chats. Like I'll, I'll hang in the normal chat and we'll write a song together and stuff when there's like 300 people. But once it gets like, for most of this, there's over a thousand, which is I'm honored. That's awesome. But as soon as some of these motherfuckers just start talking about Jews running the world, it just becomes nonsense. Like literally it's just like, it's so it's such a waste of your life. It's such a waste of your fucking life. Actually, I have one more video I want to play about my brother. It's all about what I'm talking about right now. It'll, it'll take me too long to find it, I think. Maybe I can find it quickly. 
he tells the greatest story about this exact thing. I'm going to find it. Fuck it. Um... Let me just give me one second here. Albums. It was from a while ago, and I bombed ahead. I, I haven't put it up yet, but it, it. He tells it. It's so good. And while it's emailing or whatever, I will uh, just play you guys a little piano or something. It will be nice and and relaxed. Is this it? No. Fuck. Where was this? Okay, we're working outside. Here it is. I might just put it up. So there's a guy who has to, has to leave town. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to... I'm going to make this way faster. I wonder if that'll work. No, that's, that's, that's shit. Hey, Georgie, one second. Give me two minutes, buddy. Uh, so listen, don't be... Do what? Oh, what are you guys talking about? Just don't argue all the time. It's so gay. Can you play I'll Try Anything Once by Julian Casablancas? I don't know that one. Oh. Do you guys know the, uh, nothing, a troll? Oh, well, just fucking get him out. I'm so done with trolls. Like, I was trying to find follow this policy of, like, you know, people can, can hang. I don't want to silence people unless they're obvious, like, bots. It, life's so fucking fleetingly short. George, relax. I'm coming soon, buddy. That like, if someone just comes in just to just to be gay, just get him out. It's like get the fuck out of here. You're not you're not welcome. Ticks. Is there a troll bear? There is a troll bear. He's a good dude. I like troll bear. Uh, Uber gay. George is funny. Oh, George is hilarious. George, you want to say hi? George, come here. He's wagging his tail at the door. Georgie, hi, come here. Come here, George. Wanna see how big George has gotten? Oh, look at big old George. Oh, hi, big George. Hi, big George. Oh, you my big boy. Are you my big boy? Are you my big boy? Oh, 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 oh. George is awesome. All right, did that send? It'll be a good story to, to end with. Be a good story to end with. All right, let me get to my Gmail. And then I'm gonna have an awesome day with my family. I'm, I'm inspired by Professor Bear's story. So we are going to uh, go outside and just kick around a ball and just be awesomely fucking pumped. All right, I, uh, the video's not gonna work, so I'm just gonna hold the audio to the, to the mic. Fuck technology. This will work. So this is the setting. We're just sitting in a car. So there's a guy who has to, has to leave Shit. town because it's full of uh, racists and narcissists and bigots and, and closed-minded people that uh, do not want to watch deer prance or listen to the fish sing in the stream. So he leaves the town. He goes to the next town. And the gatekeeper of that town says, oh, you know, what, can I help you? He's like, well, I, I need I need to move into this town. But I, do you have artists? Do you have poets? Do you have musicians? Do you have dancers? Do you have people who want to, you know, look at birds? You know, maybe just be still with God. And like, oh, yeah, man, we got a lot of that. Come on in. So, you know, he comes in. Five, fuck, six months later, he leaves. Looks at the gatekeeper on the way out. Fuck you. And he goes to the next town. Guy says, can I help you? He's like, yeah, I just moved from a town full of fucking assholes. And, you know, all they want to do is tell me I'm like some kind of freak of nature. And, you know, that I don't have any opinions worth listening to. Do you have people here that want to like sip on a latte and maybe talk about Edgar Allan Poe? You know, do you have people here that maybe want to like, I don't know, like make birch bark canoe, little canoes or trinket. Do is that here? Oh, yeah, that's here, man. We have all, we have guilds here. It's great. So he moves into that town six months later. He's heading out, looks at the gatekeeper. Hey, man, fuck off. So he goes to the next town. Guys, can I help you? He's like, I hope so, man. I just came from a town full of fucking narcissists and, you know, all kind of finger pointers and people that just want to be on social media and use their phone. I mean, I'm looking for people that, like, you know, maybe you want to do flower arrangements. 
You know, you got anybody here that wants to, like, you know, maybe rewrite, like, the Lysistrata, maybe discuss some Socrates? Oh, man, yeah, we have 10 libraries. We have, we have libraries here, like, for every 10 people. You'll love it here. Well, the guy moves in there. Six months later, he's out the fucking door again, looks at the gatekeeper. Fuck you. Well, he keeps going from town to town and leaving until finally, uh... Finally, he fucking just dies. <laughs> <laughs> He just dies. Eventually, he just dies. It's just a wasted life. <laughs> you know, it's like a troll comes in and, oh, this troll's an asshole. Oh, Jews are this. No, they're not. Jews aren't. And then eventually, you just die. <laughs> oh, Dilub, I'm not making fun of you. No, I love you. you. Please, are you kidding me? You're the fucking queen bee. Uh... I, I, it's the people that, that just, uh, that that's all they do. You know, it's just, it's just, then you just die. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like that guy never was self-aware enough to realize that he, you get it. All right, hit the like button, share it. Uh, hugepianist.com slash subscribe. If you want to do a monthly donation, every bit helps t tremendously. Patreon.com slash WDTL. I'm coming, little man. Uh, if you want to buy one of my specials or Eric Nimmer's new special, go to hugepianist.com slash specials. Uh, yeah, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment, share it, like it, throw it out on Twitter because I can't. And I uh, appreciate you guys. Go have a great day bumping around a volleyball. That, that Professor Bear letter was really awesome. And uh, share the Tommy Robinson song. I have it on my page as well. All right, much love.